This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 19, on the 14th of July 2013, an interview with a super pass. Hello everyone and welcome to the One to One Show and this week it's a pleasure to have on the show Juliana Mayer, the CEO of uh, Superpass. So hi Juliana and great uh, to have you on, how's it going? Hi, yeah, great, thanks. Great. Thank you very much for having us. And so uh, let's talk about Superpass, you know, I've, uh, I've experienced uh, uh, an iteration of the service already since, uh, since we first spoke uh, a few months ago. And so uh, tell me all about the company and first, first up, uh, uh, what does the service do and what, what is it all about? Um, Superpass is uh, the next generation music fan club. So it's all about that um, really um, kind of intimate relationship between an artist and its fans. Yeah. Um, my, my background is, is as a musician. Yeah. And as a musician, um, there's a lot of wonderful, fantastic digital tools out there. But I felt that there was um, a real gap in, in what was available and that that was really where earning revenue as an artist came in. So that's really sort of the, the core of where Superpass came from is that it's a way for artists to earn regular income from their music and it, additional income to all the other revenue sources that they already have. So that's that's really where it came from. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. and yeah, so... So essentially it's, it's like a... Uh, it's a subscription for artists uh, and tailored to musicians to provide the best possible experience to the musicians providing the assets and also to to uh, and the creativity and everything else and and to the consumers that want to want anything that their artist is producing right yeah exactly so so the service is completely free to artists and fans pay one or two pounds a month so it's a really really tiny monthly subscription that they're paying to their favorite artists. So that's that's really where we're different is that yeah. the money is going directly to the artist that that fan loves. So our tagline is your backstage pass to your favorite bands online. So it's really all about a fan's favorite band and an artist's most loyal fans that really want to, you know, they want to read all their news and updates. They want to buy every single thing that they release. They want to see that, that artist releasing more stuff. So yeah. I guess, the, so I explain what the pain from the artist side is, but the pain from the um, fan side that we're solving is that fans, have to wait ages and ages for the next album because of the the traditional record release cycle. Sure. With Superpass, um, if the artist is at the gold level, it's it's the artist's choice which level they choose. But if they're at the gold level, then they're releasing a brand new track to their fans every single month. So that's really the, the sort of the core ethos to 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 what the whole Superpass platform is built around is is that model of a new release every single month. So not only is the artist earning revenue, but they're actually having more focus on actually creating more new music and and the important thing of actually linking that delivering that music to their fans so yeah in in my own example um when i was um being a, a singer songwriter independent musician i had a really good fan fan base of um several thousand um fans on my mailing list and i was writing loads of songs but I was never having time to record those new songs for my fans because I was just spending all my time promoting, touring, doing all the online wonderful social networking stuff that, that is available to musicians. But it just meant that all the focus was on promotion yeah. and not on creating and engaging directly with the fans that really care. So that's that's what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a big part of um, you know, what people are talking about lately is uh, to identify different types of fans. And of course, uh, Superpass uh, uh, aims to target uh, super fans. I mean, and it's not just uh, uh, hardcore super fans. There's also different layers of, of pricing that fans can choose. So even, you know, a, a relatively big fan of a band could probably choose an entry level layer to to uh, come and, and join the club. But uh, how do you find artists are uh, dealing with identifying those fans? Because uh, oftentimes artists are not very good at doing the kind of uh, research and so uh, how do you find they're performing on that front and, and what kind of tools are they using to to identify their their own hardcore fans it's a really interesting question and actually the answer is different for every single artist so that yeah. is something that we've been learning is that each artist that, that that we're launching has a completely different demographic a different way of engaging with their fans and 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 not only the ones that are currently live on the platform, but the ones that are preparing themselves to launch in the coming weeks and months. Yeah. Um, so that that's really interesting. Um, obviously, mailing list is is a, a really big thing. Um, although actually, one of our artists the other day was talking about mailing lists and saying how actually getting at a gig, getting a fan onto a mailing list is actually not that great because of email open rates these days, and you know that that they're still not then actually able to get. The core message over to those fans following the gig whereas actually if they can get the fans to subscribe to their super pass at the gig then yeah. they have an, 
and a- absolutely direct access to that fan and the fan has direct access to that band from that day forward and the, the, the sort of promoting bringing the fan on board has only happened once yeah. and the, then that relationship can continue as long as as long as the artist is still delivering cool uh, great stuff to the fan the fan's going to continue and um, that, that relationship so yeah. um, so that is is one of the great things so you so you're asking about how um, artists find find those fans so yeah so, so mailing list is a big one um, some of our artists actually have a kind of a text messaging kind yeah. of roster that, that that seems to be quite effective um, and because it's all about the, that really intimate um, interaction with the fan a lot of artists are actually doing personal messages to fans that they know have previously been really engaging in, in previous stuff and yeah. um, in terms of the, the, the bigger picture of how we're engaging with fans and finding true fans um, is is looking in all the places where people who really love music are going. So obviously yeah. live, live, live music venues and um, blogs and um, all the stuff where, where fans are, are really look going out their way to look for, for music discovery. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so yes, yeah, our target is not the general public because sure. unfortunately for, for all of us in music, um, not everyone sort of values paying for music, but yeah. um, luckily for us, there is, um, a, a certain demographic that is very important to us, which are the people that that a love music, love supporting it, really not only want to buy existing music, but actually the idea of being patrons of the arts, as we've seen with all the, the fan funding models, is that actually being the ones able to to fund future creativity yeah. is, is um, really um, you know really popular and, and important to a lot of people. So yeah. we've really tapped into that and given them another option, and um, that not only so with tr- the traditional fan funding models, um, f- fans are paying a, a large amount upfront and then still having to wait ages for the next release. Whereas what we're doing is they pay, yeah, it's a smaller amount, they pay it now and immediately they get something for it. Yeah. And and as the um, the months go on, they, they, they end up paying sort of a similar amount, but they've had it as a... And because people sort of yeah. um, attention spans are, are shorter as well, and um, we're sort of giving them in, in more kind of bite-sized chunks as well. So yeah. it's, it's and it also it's, it's a way of, of of keep reminding that you exist to your fans, and so yes. uh, yeah. it's a way for you to be able to also get in touch with them every month uh, as an excuse. So you can say I'm coming from to gig or I'm going to tour or anything else that's uh, along uh, along those lines, and then you can drive up ticket sales and all sorts yeah, of stuff as yeah. well. And so our artists is quite a lot of um, help and advice as well in in what the best way to to engage with those fans and how to keep right. them interested. So yeah. Yeah. But it's important also to gauge when, like, if you're an artist and you have a mailing list or you have um, developed a relationship with your fans. It's also important to understand when is the right time to propose Absolutely. something like Superpass to them and when they think their audience is mature enough to make that work. Uh, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we it's... Do, we do have an application process, so we do help bands with that decision. Yeah. Um, and and some of them aren't necessarily ready to um, maybe go for the gold level. So we do have other levels. As I said, gold level is a super download track every single month whereas bronze is actually um it's all the other features which actually we haven't talked about uh, we haven't talked about yet but with bronze there isn't the super download so it's for artists that maybe they aren't ready to release regular recordings yet or maybe their their label has other plans for them that um so so the bronze level is all the other stuff without the super download so an example um that we've got is um a, a girl who actually she's currently a student so she's she's really young she's got a really great fan base yeah. she's played support for rihanna and beyonce and got thousands of fans but she has not got a single recording when we spoke to her we were like wow how come you haven't got any recording she said well you know i'm funding it all myself i'm only 22 i i'm i'm still studying i i can't afford to go into the studio and she said, but I've got all these fans that are desperate for my music. So for her, bronze is perfect because it's a way that her fans can pay one pound a month to get all this access to all the, all the stuff she's already doing, all the gigs, all the um, live streaming and live video stuff that she's already starting to, to, to do on her journey. They would love to have a view, insight and access into that world. And for that, they're giving her one pound a month that she can then say, well, actually what I'm doing, guys, is I'm if you want recordings from me, this is the way that... I'm going to be able to, to go into the studio and then hopefully for her, that's a platform for her to then progress to, to silver and gold level. Yeah, that's great. So we've talked about the super download. There's also super streaming, which is where the artist offers their, their whole back catalogue 
all their previous album singles to their fans for on-demand streaming. So similar yeah. to services like Spotify, Deezer. Um, and the difference being that, that with this, the fan knows that that £2 they're paying or £1 they're paying, most of that is going direct to the actual artist that they are listening to. Right. So for us, again, that, that's a real sort of core difference of um, no one's really doing that at the moment. Um, so, so, yeah, so it's quite interesting with the, with the debate that was going on last week. Absolutely, yeah, with uh, York uh, and uh, Godric. Uh, so so that, that's an interesting point, actually. Like, well, well, the, the, one of the things that I was going to ask you was uh, in light of these types of debates uh, and uh, uh, in light also of the fact that it's, uh, it's very difficult to... Uh, as much as you can drive super fans onto a platform like Superpass, uh, there's probably like a lot of merit also in looking at uh, perhaps third-party integrations in the long run. Uh, do you think that's something that maybe in the future of the company as well, because uh, that would put the fans' hearts at ease, but they would still be able to access those tracks as part of a collection that is perhaps not just the Superpass collection? Absolutely, yeah. So, so those are all options that we'd love to explore, um, and as we we grow and develop, we you know we're definitely open to looking at all those different things. We're we're already um, talking to various different partners. Yeah. Uh, we're doing some stuff with Mobo. Um, we've got some other stuff going on with um, di digital distributors. So obviously after the super download release, yeah. they then want to release it on iTunes and um, and Spotify and all, all the other places. So we're, we're doing deals with distributors. Um, there's all kinds of things that we want to be able to offer the artists, you know, kind of all the different services um, because we're offering a nice complementary set that complements a lot of the other things. So, that's, so that's actually quite a nice position to be in. So we're really open to talking to um, various different potential partners from, from really across the music industry, um, open to any suggestions and ideas. Yeah. And uh, talking about uh, platforms, uh, uh, for now, uh, as I understand, it's a web-based uh, uh, service. Uh, and, but of course, uh, w you know, one can see it uh, working really well uh, as part of uh, you know, iOS, iOS ecosystem, especially as uh, subscriptions are already supported, even though you have to give that 30% cut to Apple. And also, you know, push, push notifications could be quite a useful feature to be able to remind fans that uh, new tracks out. So are, are you looking at mobile options, either on iOS That's or Android? It. Absolutely, it's 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 really very much the next thing on our to do list. We we really really want to do that. Um, so hopefully, you know, so sort of towards the end of the year, we'll be looking at um, adding that to the offering. Um, one of one of the next things that we're doing as well is we're we're going to start looking for seed funding. So everything we've done so far has been completely um, sort of funded by ourselves. But right. the next stage is seed funding. So. Um, you know, looking to explore those options, and obviously that that, that would have then help to, to be able to offer the next next steps in our in our wonderful long list of features we want to add. And, and one of the core things of that is is the mobile app as well. Yes, yeah, so we talked about super download and super streaming. Then we have super backstage, which is kind of the um, where they have everything in one place. So all their behind the scenes footage, radio interview archives, all the stuff that a lot of artists have just sort of sitting around, or it's spread out all right. over different places on the internet. Now they can have everything in one place. Some of it might be available elsewhere. Some of it might be exclusive. It's really up to the artists yeah. how they want to use that. They can also pull it in from places like YouTube and stuff. Um, and then the other thing as well is Super Stage, which we, we really love this. It's where they can do what we're doing currently, you know, just yeah. have the live video chats. Um, it, the artist is on the video and the, the fans are on a, a live um uh, text chat stream yeah. so artists can do sure. acoustic performances make fans can make requests so it's an, again all part of that kind of fans getting that behind the scenes access to their favorite artists feeling that they're the reason why they're funding those artists so they're the reason the artists can afford to to make more new music yeah. and the artists are getting enough regular income that they can Bring the focus back to creativity and less on promotion so yeah there we go that's it in a nutshell great well thank you so much for uh, being on the show it was a pleasure having you and i would encourage uh, artists and fans to go and check out superpass but also uh, people in the industry that may be interested in this concept and uh, whether there's any potential partnership to uh, also head to superpass.com and check out the website uh, thanks so much juliana for your time Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And, and just to remind people, it's it's S U P A, yeah. so it's super with an A. Um, and thanks so much for having us on. And, and uh, yeah, look forward to chatting more soon. Absolutely. Talk soon. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.